It's time to begin another season with the Detroit Red Wings. Before we get into that, though, first and foremost, I want to apologize for the lack of videos over the past two days. Uh, as a lot of you guys know, I run more of a night-based schedule, as you can probably tell by when I stream. Uh, past couple of days, been with the girlfriend, have to switch that schedule to a day schedule, and the videos, as a result, have taken a little bit of a hit. So I apologize for that, but... This video will be up, there'll be a Melnick episode today as well, and on the Patreon there will be a Houston episode. So, uh, yeah, at least one video for each of the three ongoing series that are currently being featured on this channel. But yeah, for now, thank you guys for checking out this video. Of course, I'm going to ask you at the start, uh, feel free to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Of course, check out everything in the description. That said, as you can tell, I simmed forward a little bit further ahead than I normally do at the start of a video. We left at the re-sign phase, but I wanted to get this team set up and organized before we sim the season, because this is the first time that we have gone with our best available lineup, as opposed to focusing on those who have a bit of chemistry, and I think, or uh, better potentials, I should say. And we have focused on chemistry as well, but I think the reason for that is, as you know, if you saw the last episode... The draft really, really didn't go our way. So I figured, screw it, let's just throw the best lineup out there and see what happens. So top line now, we have Willie Cashman, of course is a medium elite now at 23 years old. DeAndre Carlton is up to an 81 after last season, you know, spending that on the fourth line. And Brennan Othman, of course, there now 23 years old as well. So excited to see what they can do. That could be a really good line. Second line as well could be sneaky good. Brendan Hoffman next to Tony Shepard, who was our top line center last year, and William McCauley, who actually might have been on that top line as well. Third line of Ethan Cardwell alongside Hayden Fowler and Cameron Merritt. Merritt, you know, it's tough with the chemistry. We could have played him on the top line, but it wasn't a great fit. Unfortunately, that is kind of the story with this coaching staff. It's a great coaching staff, but... A lot of players don't fit in on the team. Fourth line, Reed Neal, another former first round pick. Still stuck on the fourth line for now until we get a new coach. But, you know, I think if he were to get a higher profile spot, he'd benefit quite well from it. He's alongside Max Galad, who benefited really well from being in the AHL last year. Harvey Brennan is on their right. So it's not that bad of a team. You know, on par, maybe slightly worse than what the real-life Detroit Red Wings threw out there this year. Probably slightly worse, but not that much worse, you know, offensively at least. Defensively, I mean, I don't know, I guess there are some uh, there are some Red Wings fans who might disagree. And actually, I need to change these two back to an OFD and DFD pairing. I thought if I changed them to two-way, it would be uh, an even rating, not a minus one. So I'm going to have to make a slight change there, unless... Yeah, unfortunately... Uh, you know, really struggling with chemistry. But Jamie Drysdale is there, uh, still at a high elite. Now 24 years old alongside Eddie McGrath. Second pairing of Nick Stock and Michael Bianconi. Matthew Bales is next to Marcus Gretz. So the goaltending tandem, Tristan Lennox and Howard Lowe now up to a 70 overall. Slowly but surely getting towards usable status at the NHL level. No healthy scratches have actually turned injuries off for the sake of just being able to sim through a season quickly enough. The AHL lineup features a ton of our draft picks. We'll see whether or not guys like that, you know, ever really make it. Uh, Edgar Sasaki, who we featured in the NHL the past couple of seasons, we'll see how he does in the AHL. Of course, Kari Piernan is the starter there. Now 25 years old, stuck, really capped out at a 72 overall. So I'll remember, hopefully, to fix that third pairing. I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference regardless. But for now... Let's focus on what we always focus on. Let's take a look at the draft class. Will this be the year that we have a little bit of luck? Unfortunately, Anthony Pratt belongs to the Prince George Cougars. Top OHL player is Gordon Ferguson, who is on the Ottawa 67s. Damn it. Next up, Rohan Gilbert's not available. Two more options who are projected to go in the first round at the start of the year. And we have one of them, Angelo Delmas from the Flint Firebirds. Guarantee he's an offensive defenseman. You could be saying hello uh, to potentially, potentially, we won't get ahead of ourselves, but Jamie Drysdale's uh, defense partner. Unfortunately, Earl Shannon's not available to us, nor is Isaiah Beck. We'll see what happens about a potential inclusion of, of Sarnia or other uh, teams, other regions perhaps, in the near future if the drafts continue to be as rough as they've been. And unfortunately... Our very next player is Mason Cutler, another defenseman 
from the Erie Otters. So, whew, we are looking perhaps at another really rough draft. Chase Sampson has really good potential for us here, I'd say. Six foot three, seventeen year old from the Windsor Spitfires as a goaltender. Saginaw here, Colin Maxwell, another 17-year-old. And I'm not seeing a ton of the overagers who would have been holdovers from the draft last year, which is also concerning. That means they really haven't made improvements and probably still absolutely suck. So, I mean, again, it's... The, the thought of adding Sarnia... I mean, some people have recommended, oh, add this team, add this team, add this region, make Americans available. We might have to at a certain point. We'll see how this particular draft goes, but uh, yeah, if if it goes like it looks like it could go, that, that whole giving in option might happen sooner rather than later. Yeah, this is, this is pretty rough. Here are all, uh, all the overagers for the most part. Maybe not all overagers, but... A lot of the remaining players on these teams way the hell down here. Now imagine, imagine if we didn't add Windsor, <laughs> who wasn't initially a part of the plan. It was just going to be three teams. And out of the gates, you guys are like, no, add Windsor at the very least. Of course, we left that up to a vote. And even with Windsor here, it is, it is rough. Very, very, very rough. So you got a couple of guys here down the list. Nasir Defazio was someone who I was hoping would be half decent by the time he was 18 years old. We saw him in last year's draft, and uh, no. No, actually. He, he hasn't improved at all. So we'll try to get as much info as we can on those lower players. But the bottom line is, uh, you know, unless... Unless Delmas is somehow a lower leader or a high top four. You know, if he ends up being a medium four, it's decent, but still not quite what we had in mind. I'll see you guys at the end of this season. We'll see how the team does and take it from there with the draft. All right, another season has come and gone. 26 wins, which isn't all that bad, but yeah, no, this team still not quite there yet, which is not surprising, but our best finish to date, if I'm not mistaken, was 62 points. So we're getting better. Actually, what, at the beginning of this video, I proclaimed that we might be on par with the modern day Red Wings. Uh, we would have had a higher point total, I think, than they would have in real life, if I'm not mistaken. But they see the Atlantic Division, Toronto makes the playoffs, winning the division, Boston will play Montreal. Ottawa is going to play Philadelphia. Actually, no, Ottawa's going to play Toronto. I didn't notice that they won the division or well, the conference. Philly will play Columbus. Washington will play Carolina. In the West, Central, Dallas takes it. Minnesota and Chicago make it. St. Louis was bad. Nashville was horrible. In the Pacific, Arizona, Vancouver, Calgary, Vegas, and San Jose. Anaheim at the bottom of their division. So Arizona was the top team. We were the worst, only by six points, though, which is crazy. Goals for per game, the lowest in the league at a 2.6 goals against per game was not the highest in the league, though. New Jersey and Tampa were worse, despite us finishing dead last in the league. So that goes to show, I mean, the defense and offense really starting to turn the corner a little bit. And who knows, maybe the next few seasons could be a little bit interesting. As Brennan Othman led this team in points with 82. He was only a minus 8. You had Carlton and Cashman. So the top line all doing pretty well Significant drop-off, though, for the likes of Merritt, Fowler, Shepard, and Hoffman. The only other guys to hit 30 points. So a little bit disappointing for guys like Cardwell and McCauley, who were not on the fourth line. Very disappointed in McCauley this season. Defensively, Jamie Drysdale was still great. Uh, you, know, the, you know, the production is down, but at least the plus-minus is a little bit better you know, across the board. And then goaltending-wise, almost a 900 for Tristan Lennox and 890 for Howard Lowe. So the team continuing to get better as we go on here, but still nowhere near playoff contention or not finishing dead last in the league. Only one player broke the 100-point barrier this season. That was Bobby Brink. Just got to look at the top point producers around the league. Dylan Larkin was up there. Top goal scorer. Wallstrom put up 68 because, again, created players are cheat codes, apparently. Defensively, Drysdale... At a minus eight, still probably didn't win the Norris. But this is the third time you could say that Jamie Drysdale is worthy of the Norris. It's probably going to Kalen Addison. Maybe even a shout out to Miro Haskinen. Probably Haskinen off of the plus minus. But this is the third time now for 24-year-old Jamie Drysdale that you could say 
he should win the Norris. I mean, off the normal uh, leading stat, which of course is points. Wallstead had the most wins in the league. Shutout leader was also Wallstead in Vancouver. He's an 86 at this point. Did that say he was franchise? Jesus, he went up to low franchise. That's insane. Save percentage leader for a starter was Jack LaFontaine at a 917. So save percentages were down a little bit, but top goal scorers weren't exactly there. Andre Molnar is going to win the Calder. Zach Bolduc wasn't that far behind him. So another season comes to a close for the Red Wings. You know what that means. We get to go to the main event of this episode. The main event of every episode in this series, which is quite simply the draft. We have to hope that we have seen some progression from draft eligible players for us. Otherwise, it's tough to put a positive spin on this season. You can look at the improvement, which isn't surprising because we went with our strongest lineup for once. You know, the development of certain players might help as well, but without getting some top-notch talent into the system now, it is going to be tough to put that positive spin on these drafts. So it just seems as though the WHL uh, gets more high-end talent than the OHL does, which is pretty surprising, if I'm being honest. I mean, maybe 10 years ago, but now? I'm not so sure about that. Colorado wins the Stanley Cup. As they beat Ottawa in six games. So not too bad there. We'll take a look at that Avs roster, the awards, and we get down to the draft. But Nathan McKinnon leading the way for the Avs alongside Alex Newhook. Mitch Marner now on Colorado, which is insane. Robert Master, Simone in 86, Burakovsky, Landeskog. So some new additions. Sammy Blay as well, but a lot of familiar faces to that team. Kale McCarr is amazing. Simon Nemec, Nemec, I'm not sure. N-E-M-E-C. And you're from Slovakia. Who's to say? But pretty damn good player. They still have Gerard. They still have Bowen Byram. Yeah, it's not surprising that Colorado just won the Stanley Cup. And Kochkov had a 9-23, despite LaFontaine being the starter in the regular season. And again, injuries are off, so that doesn't explain uh, what the difference was with the playtime. So Colorado wins, second straight Stanley Cup for the Western Conference. Bobby Brink wins the Art Ross, and the Hart. Dumba wins the Norris. So, again, why wow, Dumba, of all people? I didn't even really see him in the running. How they decide the Norris in this game, I have no idea. Bobby Brink wins the Lady Bing. The Calder goes to Molnar. McKinnon, the Con Smythe. Dude named Linden won the Vesna, which is hilarious. Just Jorgen wins the Jennings. McGrath wins his second straight Masterton. Jack Adams to Carolina, Aho wins the Selkie, Ted Lindsay to Bobby Brink, and the Rocket Richard to Wallstrom. Then down in the AHL, uh, Kondalik putting up the most points, Justin Sordiff was the MVP, Pavel Dorofayev scored the most goals, Mo Deems, top rookie, top defenseman Johnny Tyconic, top goaltender, a dude named Yoshi, which is hilarious, and Dorofayev was the MVP of the playoffs for the Calder Cup winning Chicago Wolves. Poor Jamie Drysdale. Win, uh, you know, if we don't win a cup in this series, that's fine. Just get Jamie Drysdale a Norse at some point. Lottery results are up. We have the number two overall pick. We switched with Boston, who has Nashville's selection. Poor Nashville, by the way. So it doesn't really affect us all that much. Like I said, unless somebody moved up, that's not a major loss. So Kenny Malkin, Patrick Kane, Nick Backstrom, Kopitar, a lot of over 1,000 point guys retiring. Thomas Tatar retires as well. Tempted to play the clip, but I'll probably get copyright strikes since we're on YouTube rather than Twitch. Eric Carlson also retires. Tori Krug. For goaltenders, Freddie Anderson, Sergei Bobrovsky, Jake Allen, amongst others. I don't think we lost anybody to injury here. I don't think. I don't think. No, we did. We signed Zach Smith to one of those kind of whale contracts just to not have to worry about cap space. And he ended up retiring. So, again, not a big loss to us. Eric Carlson becomes a coach. Well, let's find out how this is going to go for us. We need some sort of momentum builder here or, again, going to be very tough to put a positive spin on this episode, as Pratt went number one overall. We know he was in the W, I guess, with the Winnipeg Ice. Or, no, Prince George. I figured I just messed up the <laughs> abbreviation. So let's see who we have here. Our first round pick, second overall, 
it's still going to be Delmas. Ferguson's there, Gilbert's there, so at least we have somebody half decent. And Angelo Delmas, he's not amazing out of the gates. It's weird that he has a Petrangelo comparison because of his size. But Angelo Delmas is the pick. We get another decent defenseman. 65 overall, medium top four. That's not bad. But, I mean, that's like an amazing second rounder. It's an okay first rounder. It's a pretty poor first rounder, uh, given where we select. You know, where we make our selection every single year at this point. Next up. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That second round pick. I don't even know if I'm taking Mason Cutler. I mean, that potential wasn't confirmed, but that is that is horrific. Just to show you who else is available, Dempsey, Ferguson, Esposito. There was a Ben Goa. Is this Jake Ben Goa? <laughs> it's not. It's George. Fair enough. Fair enough. So let's see. This is looking shaky. So we have Cutler available to us. Who, uh, yeah, so close to being confirmed. B's and C's, but a D in defense. He's the only guy anywhere close. We just, we have to pick him. So Mason Cutler from the Erie Otters is the pick. A confirmed low top. Six defenseman. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Okay, third round. If somebody here could be half decent, that would be fantastic. I'm not holding my breath. We're looking at Colin Maxwell. <sighs> Samson ended up only being a backup level player. God damn. This, the luck just hasn't been here. There are decent players available in these lower rounds. You know, these mid rounds, mid to lower. And it's just, they're not there for us. Colin Maxwell from the Saginaw. Spirit is the pick. Another low top six defenseman. Three defensemen selected in this draft so far. We know we're taking a goaltender next. It is going to be the backup, Samson, who at least has some half-decent stats out of the gates, but, again, not what we're looking for. 58 overall, medium backup for him. That brings us to the fifth round, and maybe this will be the episode where, again, I ask in the comments, what do you guys think? Do we, do we go another season or two? Or is this the point where we're like, yeah, let's let's add Sarnia or U.S. Central, which eh, I'd probably rather just add Sarnia. It's supposed to be about the OHL, not about U.S. Central. It's not so much about Michigan. It's just OHL, the American teams initially, and then we made the argument for Windsor because of their location, you know, how close they are to Detroit. So, I mean, you could use another team that's right there next to Michigan. But still in the OHL, of course. Timothy Belma is our next player. He is a medium bottom six. So we had a goaltender and a winger in this draft. But again, it's it's just bare bones. Tough to build a winner in a situation like this. Our next player is way down the board. We're just stuck with unknowns at this point. Okay, so overagers are out of here. Shovel Dave is going to go. Peros will take you off the board. 19-year-old Comrie and Carter off the board. So maybe with some of these, I guess we'll say graduating players, we might get a little bit lucky and start seeing some half-decent players generate for these teams. I mean, I guess you can just say, like, oh, okay, well, they're going through struggling times, so they don't have a great team. I don't know. But in terms of who we have pinned, for goalies, we have one. It's Dwayne Hardigan, who's 17. He's undersized. That's going to be a no. For defensemen, we have two, Terrell Gogol and Saul Holmberg. Both just giants on skates. I'd rather probably go with Holmberg, but he takes more penalties. But at least he does something point-wise. And whoops, and then we go over to forwards just to see who we have here. Again, we have two picks left. And we'll, uh, we'll just see what we have here. So, Dirksen, two points. No, you're not being picked. Mauer, no points. You're out. Zanin had one point. Nightingale with 10. He's freaking Gretzky compared to the rest of these guys. Uh, Voros can stay for the moment. Burroughs is out. Harrington is out. So, it's going to be. I think we'll go for one defenseman and one forward. 
So a uh, Manny Voros, Voros Voros, or Matteo Nightingale. I like the plus minus for Voros. Nightingale, slightly better points. I'm gonna go with Manny of Voros here. We'll hope for the best. Low bottom six, that's not surprising. That's where these guys are typically in terms of the potential range for the stage of the draft. That brings us to our final pick. It is going to be the defenseman Saul Holmberg, who is not great. Oh, boy. A fairly depressing and pathetic draft, if we're being honest. And yeah, we, we might just have to open up you know, eligibility, you know, teams that we have available to us at uh, at this point. I mean, again, you talk about it. We have the three teams in the OHL that are based in the U.S. Of course, Saginaw and Flint, both in Michigan, Erie in Pennsylvania. But then from here, it's it's tough. I mean, we added Windsor, which is right on the border to Detroit. Sarnia is the next logical team geographically. You could make the argument for uh, for the Sioux Greyhounds, although the difference there being that freaking Sault Ste. Marie is well north. Like it's technically on the Michigan border, but it's north, you know, the upper point of Michigan. So I'm up for adding Sarnia. And then you can make the argument to add the Sioux as well. And here's you know, what I'll say to that. You can make the argument for adding the Sioux because essentially that would mean if we add Sarnia and the Greyhounds, we have the entirety of the OHL's West Division in their Western Conference, which is already Flint, Saginaw, uh, the Sioux, Windsor, and Sarnia. So that, that could be done. Uh, Erie, of course, not in the same division, uh, but still eligible because they're located in the US. So let me know what you think. Do we look at adding Sarnia? Do we look at adding the Sioux Greyhounds? And if that doesn't really help us get some half-decent drafts going, we're going to have to add more players to try and at least get something going because right now, this, this isn't looking too good. I mean, again, the team is getting better, but our ceiling is incredibly low given the circumstances. That will do it for this one. You know the deal. I told you at the beginning of the episode. Drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Check out everything in the description. That goes for um, everything from the Twitter and the Instagram, the Teespring. I have shirts available. You need shirts. Everybody needs shirts. You got no one to show them off to if you're being a responsible person and staying the hell inside. But still, shirts, they're there. Some of them I might technically be able to be sued for for a copyright violation. Who's to say? So get them while you can before they get taken down and I end up in a lawsuit. Check out the Twitch as well. By the way, of course, we stream every single night over there. Uh, you know, tons of stuff happening between NHL franchise mode, NASCAR, and F1. The Last of Us. We we play whatever. We really do. So check that out if you haven't already. And of course, check out the Patreon if you haven't already. Uh, of course, exclusive content on that side of things, including our Houston Apollos expansion challenge series that is still currently ongoing 25 episodes deep or so easy enough to find if you want to catch up so i will see you all next time until then have a good one take it easy stay safe most importantly wear a damn mask i'll see you all next time